give Georgia credit. They handled their business. And, and that's really, guys, that's where I want to spend most of the time talking because what I don't like and what I'm seeing after Georgia's 63-3 dismantling of the Florida State Seminoles, no matter how you feel about Florida State not getting in the college football playoff, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that you're wrong if you say that Florida State deserved an opportunity to go out and prove it on the field. That's why I'm a 12-team college football playoff guy. That's why I cannot wait until next year when we have a 12-team playoff and Georgia-Florida State would have been a playoff game. It wouldn't have been just the Orange Bowl like it was this year. You wouldn't have seen all the opt-outs. We would have seen Georgia take on the best version of Florida State. But as that game played out in a fashion that I think most of us expected, maybe not the 63-3 to final, but the Dogs were a 22-point favorite in that ball game for a reason, right? As that game unfolded and that game played out, you started seeing it immediately on social media in regards to how the Orange Bowl is a sham, this game is a joke, it shouldn't be played, poor Florida State, woe is me, this isn't fair, take nothing away from the game. Guys, here's what I don't get when you look at the Orange Bowl. Like, why are we making excuses for Florida State in this one? My biggest thing is this. I could argue Florida State had more to gain from the Orange Bowl than Georgia did. Even if Georgia, if FSU would have been at full strength, they go out there, let's say they beat Georgia. They, they pull the upset. I, I'm not changing the way I view the dogs going into 2024. They're still a favorite to win it all. They're, they're still Georgia. They're still going to be there, right? Florida State, though, had an opportunity, had an opportunity to stick it to the college football playoff committee, stick it to the college football world that believed they didn't deserve to be in. For Georgia, it's 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 a feather in the cap, sure, to win the Orange Bowl. But, I mean, they fell short of their goals also. And, and so what I think really irked me yesterday was seeing all this commentary on social media about you know, poor Florida State, woe is me. Their guys chose to opt out. Their guys chose to quit. Call it for what it is. Georgia was playing for as little, quote-unquote, as FSU was. The entire offseason, guys, all we talked about was, can Georgia three-peat? Can they go back to back to back? That's the entire, guys, it felt like the regular season for them at times didn't even matter. They couldn't win by enough because the entire measure of the season was, well, is Georgia going to win three in a row? Are they going to win three in a row? Are they good enough to win three in a row? Georgia all year was being measured against, are you good enough to win three straight national championships? It wasn't measured against are you better than the SEC East are you better than the SEC it was measured against are you good enough to win three national titles Florida State they were a hot commodity over the offseason but I mean I, I think people were split very 50 50 whether Florida State was going to be worth the hype or not and it turned out they were they were a really really good football team but I mean Georgia had as little to play for as FSU so why aren't we spending our time and our energy giving more credit to Georgia's players and their culture and their buy-in for being invested and caring about a quote-unquote meaningless football game? Again, Georgia won that game. Woohoo, big deal. Florida State had more to gain from winning it. And still, those guys that Mike Norvell brought in and I'm not saying they made a bad decision. Listen, make a business decision. I get it. Trust me. I get it. Make a business decision for your future. But I don't feel bad for Florida State. That's what I'm getting at. I don't feel bad for FSU. Their guys chose to opt out. That's it. And did they get snubbed? Did they get screwed from the college ball playoff? Yes. I'm not saying they didn't. But I just... It kind of irked me yesterday, seeing all this commentary on social media that the whole woe is me attitude for FSU, like, nobody made them opt out, guys. 
Nobody made a mop down. Mike, Mike Norvell in post game saying that if, if they'd have if they'd have lost the ACC title game, maybe things would have been a little bit different in regards to maybe their players would have taken the approach of you know let's prove our doubters wrong and let's go let's go win an Orange Bowl. I mean maybe, but I, I just. If you didn't want to play with what was on the line for Florida State, which was sticking it to the doubters, sticking it to the committee, showing that, hey, y'all got it wrong, you had the chance to do that if you're FSU. Florida State had more to gain. And their team, their culture, I'm not saying Mike Norvell's a bad coach, a, a bad leader. I'm not saying the culture in that room is, you know, is bad, but there was a difference. Georgia's guys all could have opted out. They, they all could have. They all had the same decision as the FSU guys did. And guess what, guys? This leads me to my next point. Georgia, you could argue, got just as snubbed as Florida State did. They dropped from one to six. One to six, which is unheard of after losing to Alabama in the SEC title game. And listen, I know there was no perfect solution this year. Going back to that, there was no perfect solution. Somebody was going to get screwed. Somebody was going to get jobbed. But, I mean, Georgia had every right in their own mind to be upset and frustrated, and their players to say, you know what, it's the Orange Bowl. Florida State's guys are out and out. I I'm out and out. I'm not playing. Well, why did their guys play? And they got just as many, if not more, NFL guys who have futures to protect. So I just, I just, you know, seeing it on social media, the Danny Cannells of the world and others that are just – College football, you know, I, I saw RG3. College football is a travesty. Those dudes on Florida State's roster made that choice. They made that decision. And the difference was this. Florida State's players, they got screwed, yes. They, they got jobbed. They got screwed. They did everything right on the field, literally went undefeated, and the college football playoff committee told them, that's not good enough. We're keeping you at home. Their team had an opportunity to win the Orange Bowl, stick it to them. And they said, it's a big deal, but it ain't that big of a deal. Meanwhile, Georgia's players and their team and Kirby Smart, and guys, that's why everybody was picking Georgia. Even if FSU had their full roster, would have still picked Georgia. Because when it comes to motivation and caring and taking pride in what you do, there's nobody better than Kirby Smart. He's a master motivator. He's one of the best in college football. And that's what you saw in the field. I mean, you also saw a completely undermanned Florida State team, but I just, I don't feel bad for Florida State, guys. I, I don't. I, I don't feel bad for Florida State. You know, I, I maybe did when the selection happened because it's a shame it doesn't get to play out on the field. So for that, I still do, like, I empathize with FSU. I don't feel bad for the 63-3 to beatdown because there's guys who opted out who could have stopped that, who could have changed that. And, you know, this leads us down the rabbit hole of what needs to change in college football, what needs to change with the bowl games to, to make sure that never happens again. I, I don't know that there's really an answer. I mean, I, how do you make guys play? You can't make them play. But I just, I don't know why we're making excuses for Florida State because both of these teams fell short of their goals in 2023. One of them decided to still give a damn about the Orange Bowl. And one of them said they had better things to do. And it's obvious which of those two was which. Guys, like I mentioned, I think Georgia got just as snubbed as Florida State did. I mean, I, I really, and again, who do you take out of the playoff and put Georgia in? That, that's a whole other conversation. but. When you watch Georgia and Bama, you knew these are two of the best four teams in college football. Watching that game yesterday, I mean, I, I know that was an undermanned FSU team. But guys, Georgia did not just beat Florida State. They beat them to a pulp. They beat their brains in. They did what they wanted to do with them. They played their, their backups and their third stringers in the second half of the game for pretty much the entire second half. That game was over at halftime, guys. That was that was TCU all over again. So, I mean, I think you're sitting here, Georgia, this morning, you're like, we should have gotten a shot. Because I'll tell you this, guys, right now, 
I'd take Georgia over Washington. I'd take Georgia over Texas. I'd take Georgia over Michigan. And guys, I'd, I'd take Georgia over Bama in a rematch. I really would. I would take Georgia over Bama. I would bank on the fact that Georgia would not shoot themselves in the foot and make those same mistakes they made in the SEC title game. And that's not how it works, but I'm so happy we're going to 12 teams next year because it's just, it needs to play out on the field. And I know there's some out there that say, well, it did play out on the field. The SEC title game was a was effectively a playoff game. Yeah, but mm, you're stretching. You're stretching there. Guys, you look at this game, though, going through the stats. I mean, again, 63-3. to What more is there really to say? Carson Beck. And, again, a lot of these starters are pulled out early. I mean, guys, Gunnar Stockton threw two touchdowns. Like, you want to know what kind of game it was. Uh, Beck, 13 for 18, 203, two touchdowns. Kendall Milton goes for over 100. Roderick Robinson, the second, which I think could be a big time back next year for the Dogs, seven for 70. Uh, Dejon Edwards, seven for 62 and two touchdowns. Milton, by the way, had two touchdowns. Also, Dylan Bell, five for 86. Dominic Lovett, three for 38. He had a score. Um, and the defense was was just dominant, guys. FSU, just you could tell so early on that that game, that Florida State had no shot. Florida State was done. Nine for 26, 139 was Brock Glenn in the game. Uh, they ran the ball for just 63 yards in the ball game. They had to have some sort of running game. They did not get it. Georgia's defense was relentless, forcing turnovers. And, I mean, again, guys, an undermanned Florida State team. Admittedly, uh, it's what you've expected. And, guys, I, I just think it reaffirms not that this game was going to change this fact, but Georgia's an easy favorite yet again going into 2024. I know their 2024 schedule looking way too far ahead. It's much more difficult than it was this past year, right? We're not going to spend the entire offseason nitpicking and talking about how easy the schedule is when you got to play Texas and Alabama but when you got Carson Beck coming back and you've got one of the most, if not the most arguably talented roster in college football returning, I mean, they're, you know, bet against Georgia at your own peril when it comes to the national title game, especially in a 12 team playoff, guys, because Georgia, barring the world ending, is, is getting into the 12 team playoff. They're, they're getting into the 12 team college football playoff, right? So, um, you know, I, I think the dogs, yet again, they're an easy favorite. I don't think anybody's going to debate me on that. Finally, guys, I look at this game. Where does Florida State go from here? I, I think this FSU thing is going to be a great case study on is building the way that Mike Norvell built sustainable. For, in the sense of can you build that way with the transfer portal every single year and not have a drop-off? Right. I mean, we're seeing FSU work in the transfer portal right now, snag big names. There's rumors that Cam Ward, the Washington State quarterback, is going to commit. DJ Uyungalele was taking visits. So, I mean, they're, they're going to land some guys. There's, there's no question, right? There's no question. But you just wonder. You just wonder. Like, I, I'm really curious to see and how Florida State responds to this 60 point drubbing in the Orange Bowl. Now, Again, it's a bowl game, right? Are they going to recover? They'll probably be fine, but I I'm just really, really intrigued to see what this means for Mike Norvell's program moving forward. But again, guys, my big takeaway from this one, the dogs destroyed Florida State, okay? They killed them. And it was two teams that had an opportunity for each of their respective reasons, right? You think Georgia didn't kind of stick it to the college ball playoff committee as well? They stuck it to a lot of people, I think, in that game and just flexed their muscles and showed just how good they are. So, Kudos to Georgia. Tip of the cap. We did not spend enough time yesterday and all throughout the last couple of weeks. Georgia had opt-outs, no doubt, right? But their best players and the core of their football team and their program took it personally, right? The core of their program decided it was worth it to go play and to prove something. And Florida State's core and nucleus, guys, they got screwed by the committee. There's no question, right? But they were, woe is me, it's not worth it, who cares, I got bigger fish to fry, I got other things to worry about, and that was so painfully evident on the field. So, don't take anything away from Georgia because Florida State's players decided not to show up. Like, let's let's make sure we recognize and tip the cap to Georgia for just simply going out there, guys, and showing up and taking care of their business.